Hi, and welcome to our presentation on procuring accessible software for e-learning, how ATAG can help. Uh, my name is Josh O'Connor. I am Emerging Web Technology Specialist with W3C, and I'm here with my friend Hida de Vries, who is Accessibility Uber Nerd in Way. So we're going to be talking about um, accessible authoring tools and how it relates to all of the people who are here at the WordPress Campus for Education uh, conference, and really, really happy to be here. So, Hida, over to you. Thanks, Josh. Thanks. Yeah, I wanted to start by uh, by briefly mentioning what, what Way does. So we provide a lot of information about uh, planning, designing, developing, testing, and, and advocating for web accessibility. So uh, have a look at our, our website, w3.org slash Way, if you want more information on that. And one of the things we do to encourage web accessibility and to encourage the web to be more accessible is uh, make web standards. Um, and I wanted to highlight three of them today. The first one is, is WCAG, and that's maybe the one that you are most familiar with. Uh, it's adopted by governments in, in many places, um, and it is the Web Content Accessibility Guideline. So it is about ensuring that the content of a web page is accessible. But of course, for um, an accessible experience for people with disabilities, it's also important that the tools they use to look at websites are also accessible. So that's why we have a standard called UAC, the User Agent Accessibility Guidelines. And it's not only important for browsers to be accessible, but also for the tools that we use to create web content. Uh, and that is where ATAC comes in. It is the Authoring Tools Accessibility Guidelines. So with that combination of accessible content, uh, accessible content viewers, and accessible content creation software, we believe that the web can, uh, can truly be accessible now, why authoring tool accessibility uh, matters specifically uh, uh, to us in education um, is that we can include more teachers and more students if uh, our authoring tools include accessibility better. So if we're able to embed accessibility in the software we use, more teachers and more students can use that software. Because authoring is something that usually happens kind of early in, in the process, um, it also means that sometimes teachers will be able to fix accessibility problems before their content goes live. Now, authoring tools are tools that create web content. Um, and with that, they are tools that can improve a lot of accessibility at once. For instance, WYSIWYG editors, course creators, learning management systems, also CMSs, wikis, save as HTML functionality social media, form creators, site builders. So they're all examples of things that can create web content. And, and with that, they are things that can uh, really increase your accessibility if they are uh, embedding accessibility. Because we're talking about learning management systems, we're of course talking about the LMS itself. But just as important are plugins like form builders, survey software, uh, custom field managers, cookie banners, event management tooling, uh, social buttons, all these sorts of things that you can kind of add to uh, an LMS. Uh, and then of course, teams also are, uh, are important. So if these uh, aspects like the LMS itself, the plugins, the teams, if they all incorporate accessibility, we have a much bigger chance of having uh, an accessible e-learning experience. Now the standard to, to check this with, as I mentioned before, uh, is the ATAC standard. The current iteration is, is 2.0. So ATAC 2.0 uh, would be the standard to look at. If you want to find out more about ATAC, um, we've got a page on our website, ATAC at a glance. Uh, obviously, we'll be sharing the URLs later as well. Uh, and today, we'll be talking you through uh, some of ATAC as well. Uh, I wanted to highlight that there's two parts to ATAC. One is the editing experience. So this is about ensuring that teachers uh, or anyone who creates courses online um, if teachers with disabilities want to do that, that they are able to. Um, so it, it is about making the editing experience accessible uh, for teachers with disabilities. And then part B is about making the output uh, available to uh, students with disabilities. So if they are uh, accessing content that is created with an LMS, that that content is also accessible. Now, before we go into more detail of ATAC, um, wanted to emphasize that it is important to inquire about ATAC when you procure authoring tools. So if you are looking at um, purchasing new LMSs or maybe looking at incorporating a new plugin or a theme uh, for WordPress, 
then uh, look at ATEC as a standard, also about ATEC-like questions, like the ones we'll be talking about today, uh, and look at the ATEC angle of things when you, uh, when you are deciding which, uh, which things to pick and which things not to pick. Now we'll get into a bit more detail, starting with part A of uh, ATEC. So over to you, Josh. Okay, thanks, Hida. We're going to talk now about part A of ATAG, which is really all about the accessibility of the editing experience. Um, part A of WCAG really is about ensuring that the authoring tool interface is accessible. What that means um, technically is that it follows WCAG, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Um, this is great and a, um, a lofty ideal for an authoring tool in some ways but um, um, has some practical things that you can uh, ask for when you're getting a tool from a vendor. So some of the things that you can ask for from your vendor is, can you resize text with the uh, WYSIWYG editor with the, what you see is what you get editor? Uh, is the text changeable to meet the needs of people who have uh, vision impairments? So this is something that practical that you can actually ask the vendor. Um, are the controls labeled? So are the controls that are used within the interface accessible to users of assistive technology? Um, are they labeled? Have they got um, text alternatives if they are, you know, you, images are used to uh, describe the visual presentation of a control or an icon? So all of these things are very, very important uh, when you're picking the tool. Um, critical as well is does it work with the keyboard only? Keyboard accessibility is a 101 thing for accessibility and it's also really important for other types of assistive technologies, particularly for people with limited physical mobility who may use uh, switch technologies, single button or multiple button um, interaction uh, devices mediated through uh, um, um, scanning type software. So some of the things that you can ask is the is the uh, LMS or the CMS um, accessible via the keyboard only? Can all the controls be used via the keyboard only? Are the focus um, elements visible? Do they have good color contrast for the controls? And, and so on. Um, and finally, does the tool help authors avoid and correct mistakes? So uh, simple things that you can ask for are uh, good spelling tools. That's a, a very important thing when you're writing a lot of content online. Um, and also confirming choices for a user as well. Um, if a user is changing content in their uh, profile or if they're confirming some kind of um, information change, you know, can they uh, have some validation confirmation of completing a task or even undo and uh, any committed changes? So that's really um, some, an example of some practical things that you can do uh, when you're trying to get accessible tools. So over to you now, Hida. Yeah, and then we'll look at the B part of, of ATEC, which is about supporting the production of accessible content. So where the A part is about making sure that people with disabilities can create content, this is about making sure the content they create is, is accessible. Now, good learning management systems can create accessible content and also help avoid inaccessible content. So it's those two sides of, uh, of accessible content that are important and they can help teachers to make their courses more accessible too. For instance, by making sure that when content is generated, that it is uh, generated excessively according to the specifications and uh, avoiding problems like, like empty links. A good learning management system could also ask for required accessibility information. So sometimes when it creates things for you, like a table or a carousel, uh, it would ask you for things like uh, a caption or alternative text, because these things are important. And if they are not there, the content won't be usable uh, for, for people with disabilities. So the right CMS will maybe do some automated accessibility checks for you. Of course, they won't cover all of your accessibility, but they would be able to filter out some specific problems. An LMS could also help you uh, suggest some manual checks. For instance, if your heading structure makes sense or if the image alternatives that you've supplied somewhere, if they make sense in the context that you're using them in. It's also important that these systems allow for creating accessible content in the first place, because sometimes systems don't have an alternative text field or they don't allow for uploading captions to a video player. And if they don't have that option, then that content cannot be accessible. 
Uh, another um, thing where an LMS can make a huge difference is by having accessible templates for common use cases and maybe allowing to filter for uh, accessibility uh, conformance when they have a gallery of templates so that when you're picking a template that you can uh, pick the accessible one. When they provide components uh, such as like a carousel or tabs, that those are accessible by default. Or maybe they could warn when um, a teacher introduces color contrast issues. They may have some white text on top of a photo of a black cat with perfect contrast and then replace it with a photo of Korean food that uh, has a white and light background, uh, kind of breaking the contrast. In that case, um, an LMS could warn you and say, well, this contrast is not sufficient. Maybe you need like a backplate, put some black uh, color behind it or use a bolder font or whatever makes sense in that contest. So um, some LMSs will help you kind of fix accessibility problems when they notice them. That could also go for, uh, for spelling problems. Like they could be adding a spell checker to content fields so that um, maybe things that aren't so obvious, like when you've replaced the U and submit with a W, uh, you may not notice at first, but when it gets read out by a screen reader, it may be super confusing for uh, some of your users. Um, so adding a spell checker could really, really help with that. In other words, the right uh, LMS could encourage more accessible content uh, and with that kind of become a personal uh, accessibility assistant, as it were. So in conclusion, um, an LMS needs to be accessible uh, to everyone, and that includes students as well as teachers with disabilities. Um, and to, to make sure that is the case, uh, we encourage you to ask vendors for more accessibility, for improved accessibility. Ask them if they've done accessibility audits based on ATAC or, or maybe WCAG if they haven't used ATAC. Maybe if you would develop internal systems uh, or when you procure LMSs as well. Now, thanks very much for, uh, for listening. That was all for us today. Thanks very much, Hida, and I hope everybody got something useful from that and enjoy the rest of your conference.